if there is technology then there is difference means this is always in tradition like if we have internet technology especially 4g and now 5g then around the globe there is difference and everywhere people try to stick to the new technology so this is human tendency no one is good no one is bad technology comes then it is spread across so this is the tendency and this is what has always happened okay so if there was railway across the globe then britishers they brought railway to india in 1839 there was a, a kind of a goods train in madras and then in 1853 53 there was a uh, kind of uh, public train a passenger train mumbai to thane so britishers they brought railway to india when it was kind of uh, this technology came in other part of the globe then indian postal service what we know india post now so 1850 1854 britishers brought indian post because this technology was globally it was happening like that democratic system party system okay rather than taking a sword and gun and killing anyone new technology that came across was democratic system you people they kind of go and vote and they elect their representative and they go to the houses like parliament or uh, the assemblies and they discuss the people's matter this was a new technology that was coming and in britain it was it has come so britain election used to happen and there was system of member of parliament member of parliament and there was parliament so in addition to the whatever the kingship the queen so that system anyway it is the topmost system in britain still a queen can she can overthrow prime minister whenever she wants or he wants so that is anyway supreme but the normal tendency to work with the people and to take care of all the systems and military and everything economic and so they report to the queen or king that is another issue but the normal workflow it happens through democratic system prime minister so that anyway happened in britain we are talking about indian national congress so indian national congress is a party the party system or democratic system so when technology were there around the globe then it was started in india also by the british means they felt that new technology through which people without doing violence without taking gun in their hand they can raise their issue and they can kind of uh, they can govern the government uh, they can form the government and they can run a kind of a system democratic system for that party system is required and Britishers they founded Indian National Congress. We are talking about Sir Henry Cotton. Henry Cotton, a civil servant, he was co-founder of Indian National Congress. When Indian National Congress was founded by Elan Octavian Humes, A.O. Humes in 1885, with a few graduates from Calcutta University, and the first meeting convention happened in Bombay in 1885. Okay, other pillar of stone like William Wedderburn and then other pillar of stone is Sir Henry Cotton. So Henry Cotton, he was a, a meritorious student and he was a civil servant. So he completed a civil service examination in England and he came to India in 1867 as a kind of... <coughs> as he joined Indian civil service in 1867. So he came to kind of uh, Bengal presidency and he joined uh, Medinapur. So Medinapur he was assistant, probably assistant to a collector and 1867 he joined Indian civil service. Mr. Henry Cotton, Sir Henry Cotton 
and then uh, he kind of uh, in 1868 he got his first son also so the son was born in medinapur and then in 1873 son he became kind of uh, uh, assistant uh, secretary junior secretary in the bengal government in 1878 he became district collector of chitgaon district so chitgaon district now it is in bangladesh bangladesh and kind of tripura mizoram so that was so mr henry uh, caught him. then uh, 1878 he became district collector and in 1880 he became kind of a senior secretary in bengal government and and he was a kind of in revenue department i believe he would be uh, wealthy because he was a senior secretary in a revenue department and then uh, sir henry cotton uh, then uh, he was uh, promoted to chief commissioner chief commissioner of a state assam in 1896 so through 1896 to 1902 6 years he was chief commissioner of assam okay so kind of uh, he was a big person and uh, he wrote uh, books also so in 1885 uh, when congress was founded then he wrote a book new india and india in transition so india is also it's not a kind of a obsolete country and india is also coming up through indian national congress what britishers have brought through that party india is coming to new democratic technology so that is the idea so britishers they founded uh, indian national congress and slowly they brought indians to sit on the new platform new way to discuss the power and new way to kind of uh, to think about the uh, administration so means it was it is, i believe it is inevitable it is self uh, kind understandable that a new party has come and then anyway democratic system is is it was becoming uh, kind of uh, new things and it was growing everywhere then it indian national congress would take care in the future so this was anyway can be understood so if that is a new technology then indian national congress would kind of uh, take care of the administrator in the administration in the future so the britishers they they founded the indian national congress so sir henry cot so not only he was a kind of uh, co-founder so in 1904 he was president of congress sir henry cotton he was president of congress in 1904 and he presided a bombay uh, congress uh, annual congress meeting in 1904 in bombay and then he returned to england because he was civil servant and he was retired he returned to england and 1906 means later he became member of parliament from the liberal party he was a big person and he remained there as mp till 1910 and then he wrote, wrote a kind of a memory like uh, indian and the memory okay so indian and the memory he wrote a book in 1910 1885 new india and india in transition so these are the famous book that sir henry cotton wrote he was mp member of parliament in england from the liberal party so if you see this democratic system what uh, later congress brought or britishers brought like member of parliament so britishers they made a parliament britishers they made presidential house so the new delhi delhi was made by muslims mughals then there was a new delhi that came out uh, outside the delhi a new delhi so lutian was the architect and he then they constructed parliament presidential house king's way member of parliament bungalows so as everything like the lower house upper house and then in states states were formed like assam bihar uttar pradesh 
so these were north province earlier and and central province so states were formed then for each state governor were uh, formed and in 1935 election happened properly and there were chief ministers so there were member of parliament there were chief ministers everything britishers they did in a sense that in when the britishers left if if this is the british parliament and member of parliament system election is there britishers brought india till that level they made parliament and everything and when in 1947 they did the transfer of power to the indian national congress so so if i'm not saying this is it, at least from the britishers britishers perspective if we see then this is not wrong if you see indian railway is not wrong if you see uh, the all india radio is not wrong if you see indian postal service is not wrong then indian national congress is also not wrong means if this is the technology that britishers always they were living in they were following this technology so their generosity i would say that they brought these technologies to india also democratic system should be seen as a technology from britishers and they were already they were living in it but establishment of indian national congress the credit should go to the britishers like sir henry cotton not only that henry cotton has uh, had sons and they also compete they also were civil servants henry cotton sons were civil servants and they chose india only so henry not only henry cotton was a civil servant and then he has spent his he did his service in india he went back to england and he became member of parliament from the liberal party his sons they were also civil servant and they spent they spent time they uh, did their service in india so uh, henry cotton sir henry cotton and he was very close to sir william wedderburn uh, william wedderburn he presided over congress meeting in 1889 and 1910 and william wedderburn were also member of parliament from the liberal party in england when he went back to england so henry cotton he was highly associated to indian national congress uh, when he was in england whereas william wedderburn he was he was head of the overseas or british part department of the or british kind of counterpart of the indian national congress so we should uh, kind of remember henry uh, cotton so he uh, sir henry cotton so he kind of he saw many things in india in in 18 uh, 1887 1871 he saw the bengal flood and he was highly touched by bengal flood in 1990 1897 he saw assam earthquake okay so lord law i believe lord karzai he was viceroy to india and he visited assam when uh, henry cotton was chief commissioner of the assam when he praised the henry cotton i won't say henry cotton or Brit, uh, these civil servant they were pro indian and against the british that is not true they just helped indian to come to a certain level as far as democratic technology is concerned so that technology uh, indian slowly they learned and then later means i believe post 1910 when uh, william bader were uh, he was president of indian national congress i believe then it was mostly prior to that it was uh, mostly taken care by britishers only but post that it was mostly taken care by indian so indian slowly they ramped up to the new technology of the democratic system so we should not forget the contribution of uh, sir william sir henry cotton bringing up indian national congress